Welcome to episode 212 of the weekly shared security show. And joining me this week are the two sweethearts of InfoSec, co-host <laughs> Scott Wright and Kevin Johnson. Sweetheart of security. <laughs> That's right. Uh, what is it? What is it? I think my wife showed me like in the Korean dramas, they do that for hearts. Yes. <laughs> Love you guys. Oh, <laughs> you all have a special place in my heart and it's a good one. Not like oh, well, a special that's place other people have. <laughs> <laughs> well, happy Valentine's Day since this is released on Valentine's Day. Um, yes thought we'd spread some love today exactly right? exactly oh we yeah. got some love to spread <laughs> let's get started get we're, some, gonna, we're gonna run out yeah. of time i gotta i gotta yeah. drop well, off in a while so you know okay mm. yeah we've, we've got uh some lovely stories today uh for for everyone <laughs> and uh we're, we're gonna start with one that uh you know kevin loves um stories about uh, things that the U.S. government wants to do to make things better, all under the name of protecting the children. Think and, of the uh, children. Yes, think of the children, right? Um, and this is something that this kind of went away for a while. So Congress is reintroducing the earn, earn it bill um, back into uh into Congress to be voted on. And this went away because there was such an outrage from groups like the EFF and citizens that this is a bad idea that we want to start scanning all the messages of not just social media, but it could be anything, honestly, um, because it's so broad and is another kind of attempt to eliminate end-to-end -end encryption um, or the use of that. Um, which is very dangerous, as yeah. we've stated before. There's no good All back doors. <laughs> yeah. All I'm going to say is the sheer number of politicians that have been caught out sending dick pics <laughs> to underage people. You would think that politicians would be the last group of people that would want to remove end to end. We're just living in the upside down, you know? Upside. What is it? Yeah. Senator Weiner, which who didn't see that one coming? <laughs> Um, I don't know if that's a picture of my own crotch. I like my God, people. Yeah. I, yeah. Do I got to put the explicit tag on this episode? Oh, I don't I know. Know. Yes. <laughs> What's going on, man? The sheer yeah. audacity, the the absolute. What is wrong with your brain? Oh, I'm yeah. sorry. You obviously don't have one. There's that senator with a little whiteboard. Can we use the whiteboard to explain it to these jackholes? How stupid this idea is. I, my yeah. God. Oh, man. Oh, 2.30 is bad. Whoa. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I... I it's too bad. Too bad we don't still have, like, Ross Perot and Larry King, you know, that could... Get up there at the whiteboards and talk about it. No, there's that one woman. I don't remember her name. I'm blanking on her name. She she's a uh, she regularly during the like their their people are testifying to Congress and she pulls out this little whiteboard and she writes things down. Mm. She did this thing like with marbles with the budget of <laughs> yeah, who knows uh, that? What I, is her name? My God, I don't, I'm blanking I don't always on agree that, with but... her. Like to be very clear, I really respect this woman. I don't necessarily agree with her conclusions i don't necessarily agree with her uh politics all the time right but i think that many times she at least will break things down yeah you know, like no bs let's talk about this but like i said I, I think sometimes she leaves stuff out conveniently whatever um but but this earn it thing and i i honestly believe that anytime a politician uses the phrase Let's protect the children. We should punch them in the throat. <laughs> like, like the Secret Service yeah. should be tasked yeah. with punching yeah. politicians in the so throat I, when this comes up like this. Absolutely. No, no question. And just to point that out and, and highlight, you know, in the article that uh, we're talking about, it's in, on the EFF.org site. There's a paragraph in there that I thought was really interesting where it says the, the rec EFF or the independent children protection experts actually say, you know, a lot of times the children actually need encryption and private messaging just to survive, right? So it's yes. Like, yeah. Exactly. This, yeah. As somebody 
who came from an abusive family as somebody who absolutely if i was a child today would need the ability to encrypt things yeah. you want to protect the most vulnerable people in our population stop letting senators convince <laughs> you that breaking encryption is yeah. the right way to do it you jackholes great I, yep. It, yeah. It, yeah. This makes me so angry, not because they proposed it. It's, it's, it's the, pro, the proposed it again, by the way. Yeah. I'm yeah. sorry. Again. This is the second time they proposed it. No, no, no. That's what I'm, I'm even okay with these jackholes going back and going, well, you know, maybe we try this again. I'm okay with that. What bothers me so much is they blatantly lie. And then the answer is, well, yeah, but. But this is going to help. Yeah. Screw you. It's not going to help. <laughs> and this answer of, well, if you're not, if you have nothing to hide, you don't need, that's BS. Yeah, we've been down that road. Yeah, yeah. I don't have anything I can think of to hide. I, I qualify that with anything I can think of, right? Yeah. If you want to know information about me, ask me. I will tell you. I, I, I live, I'm not going to say a very public life because that implies I think I'm a celebrity with paparazzi. <laughs> But but I don't hide things. You want to know, hey, this is what we're doing. This is what I bought this thing. I'm going this weekend. I'm gonna be building an arcade cabinet on Sunday with, with Doug. We're gonna it's gonna be awesome, right? Um, whatever, like whatever. And I don't need you to know where my car is live. I like the fact that my car can use encryption to communicate with a system. Right. Yeah. I like the fact that I can send an email and not worry about who can read it. And I don't have any email. I don't I cannot think of a single email that I've ever written that I would look at and go, God, I hope people don't read that horrible thing I said. Because let's be very clear, I've said horrible things, <laughs> but I've said them publicly. Yeah. So there's nothing in my email that's worse than what I say. I, like God, this is bad. It undermines everything we've tried to do, everything the EFF has done, everything security is for. Every security person that I have seen that supports this should be shot, right? Every security person, anytime you talk to a security person, they go, yep, the Earned Act's a good idea. They're not a security person. They're a moron, right? My yeah. God, this is bad. So, so yeah, and I think Sorry. the... The bottom line is, if you're in the U.S., you know, you need to contact your representatives and let them know how you feel. Um, debatable whether or not that's actually going to do anything, but it is something that you as a U.S. citizen can do. And you can, in that article, which we'll link in the show notes, the EFF has a nice way of how to find your, yeah. your representatives yeah. and and contact them. Um, it's not, it doesn't take a long time to do it, but, um, but yeah, we do need to make our voice heard on this for sure. And if you don't live in the U S you need to make sure that your local politicians aren't pushing the same stupid idea. Well, uh, Uh Canada, Canada's got their own problems. We got our own problems. Ottawa, you know, women uh, driving down the the river and frozen ice or truckers. truckers Can I just say that Canada's problem is women driving? Because that's what I heard. (laughs) I, oh no, <laughs> that's not what I heard. <laughs> yeah, we got our own problems here. We got the truckers with the Trump flags. You know, that one doesn't make sense to me. I know. I, let me be very clear. I don't care what your stance is on whether mandates are good or bad. I do care, kind of, but I, like, I do not understand going to another country <laughs> yeah. to protest. So, and fly a flag. First of all, I don't understand or how the Trump they're flag. Flying a Trump, con- they're flying a Confederate, Confederate flag. flag. Yeah, yeah. Like, what that's... is wrong with these people? <laughs> You're Canadian. What? Do you even know? Like, <laughs> it's it's very. I uh... don't know the Canadians. Adrian Dupre, he's a SANS instructor. I, I used to, to to teach with. He used to gleefully talk about the Canadians burning the White House. <laughs> these people that are up there flying Confederate flags, yeah. don't they understand the Canadians did more damage to the White House than the Confederacy ever did? <laughs> yeah. Oh, well. Oh, good time. Yeah, cool. yeah, yeah. Well, let's, uh, let, let's get into our Aware Much segment and uh, <laughs> let's we'll do our we'll little intro. Up a little bit, yeah. Aware Much? So you know what time it is, don't you? It's time for Aware Much, brought to you by Click Armor, the first employee vulnerability management platform. 
So the FBI is warning people as they should about romance scams. And why is this a timely warning? Well, of course, it's Valentine's Day in a few days or when this episode airs. But it's really a story that's not limited by by Valentine's Day. It's not like they only do these scams on Valentine's Day. Yeah, it only on all, February 14th. All year, all year round. But it is a good time to discuss the topic for sure. And in fact, it got me thinking, maybe we should rename Valentine's Day to Romance Scam Awareness Day. Ooh. I don't know. Hmm. Apparently, though, according to uh, this story, uh, in 2020, victims reportedly lost $281 million U.S. dollars, not Canadian dollars, U.S. dollars. And so it's an important, (laughs) important story. And what do you need to know in order to watch out for or to tell your loved ones, right, who might be hitching Mm -hmm. up with people on uh, dating apps? So you could see things like immediate attempts to communicate outside the dating app. So gives the, uh, the attacker more flexibility. And what typically happens is once they get you off the platform, they'll go back on the platform with the same picture and a different name, right? So that's yep. one of the clues. You can spot the same person, uh, same picture. Uh, but a lot of times it'll be somebody in a long distance relationship or overseas, which is a good excuse for not getting together in person. It lets them run multiple scams at one time. Um, interestingly, I thought uh, they said one of the clues is that they will say that you're being introduced was fate. I'm not sure how that makes the attack more successful unless well, it's just first people <laughs> who believe in fate are more, <laughs> more vulnerable. Hmm. Who knows? <clears throat> Anyway, or there could be just uh, some personal crisis comes up and they're asking for financial help. Um, and just asking for money in general before having met is just a, a suspicious thing. That's a big one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know how I always flag those? I've never fallen for a romance scam. And the way I know I've never fallen for them is anybody who's ever reached out to me and said, man, it's fate. I'm in love with you. I'm mean, like... <laughs> Wow. It would be very rare. <laughs> There's no way. Yeah. I, yeah. Yeah. Nobody looked at this face and said, man, it's fate. That's the first. I say all hey, the time. Come on, Kevin. There's somebody for everybody, right? So my come wife, on. I <laughs> told right. her once. To each their own. Yeah. 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 So another tip off though that we've seen is sometimes they'll be showing off money, right? Or they'll brag about how much mm-hmm. money they have and they'll say, Oh, I got it by using this app for investing and stuff. Yeah. And then they get you to invest. And then of course your 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 value goes up and up and up. And they say, Oh, it's 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 at a low. You can get put some more money in and it'll go up again. Of course, when you try to cash out, there's no actual money there. So um it's a it's a pretty painful and a um expensive kind of experience. And I just wanted to give a shout out to Dana Mantilia, uh, who has a great, you know, set of YouTube videos. And we had her on the show not long ago when she was launching her podcast called Cyber Smart. Um, and her second episode in November was on a romance scam that cost a woman a million dollars. So that's a really good one to, to listen to. On, yeah, and, and you know, be aware on this uh, romance scam awareness day. So this segment of uh, Aware Much was brought to you by Click Armor, the first employee vulnerability management platform. And we use immersive interactive exercises. You might even call them gamified. I don't know. Um, <laughs> to engage employees mm-hmm. and motivate them to practice spotting suspicious situations from phishing to social engineering and other offline threats. And it really works. In fact, here's something you probably haven't seen before. Click Armor is now offering a money back guarantee. If you don't see a 60%... Whoa. 60% reduction in vulnerability to phishing within 30 days, you get your money back. So that's pretty good. Um, it's pretty awesome. If you're at all concerned about your employees wow. being tricked into triggering security breaches, then come to clickarmor.ca slash shared security and find out more. And we'll offer you a free assessment uh, on your employee vulnerability management program. It's just a 12 question quiz and you find out the weaknesses and strengths of your program. So that's it for this segment of Aware Much. What does it mean to go off the grid? Well, for most of us that are constantly relying on our phones, tablets, and laptops, it means shutting them off and doing some other activity like enjoying nature or spending time with friends and family. Now, you're probably a lot like me and struggle with turning off or putting down that smartphone because we always feel the need to be constantly connected. Listen, it's hard to go off the grid, but the good news is that there are products that can help. 
So that's why I recommend using a silent Faraday bag, which can instantly block all wireless signals, quickly taking you off the grid and giving you back control of your wireless devices. Check out their full product line at slnt.com. And because you listen to this podcast, make sure you use discount code shared security at checkout to receive 10% off your order. The one thing I would add to that is, and we'll have this link in the show notes. If you've ever seen the show on, on uh, national geographic called trafficked with uh, someone called uh, Mariana Van Zeller, um, she did an episode just recently on romance scams and she actually talks, she actually goes to these places overseas and talks to these scammers. And it's just fascinating on how they do this and how they hook people in, in, you know, through the, you know, through flirting and all these other things. And it's, it's really scary. Yeah. Honestly, this is a major industry. And it's, you know, I ever tell you, go go ahead, Kevin. Uh, Did I ever tell you about the, uh, the psychic hotline website I helped build. <laughs> I don't I can't remember the story. Oh man. I, when I was younger, I, it's one of the few jobs I ever took that when I started it, I thought I shouldn't do this. And then I second guessed myself and took the job and I was right. <laughs> and it was a, it was a company that was trying to set up a, what they wanted to set up was a dating site. They wanted to set up three sites, mm-hmm. a dating site, a psychic reading site and a porn site. And it was all video streaming. Uh (laughs) And they needed somebody who knew uh, Galacticom BBS software. That's how old this is. And uh, oh my gosh. Yeah. And uh, they they brought me on as a contractor to to build the infrastructure. And one day they were trying to hire psychics. And I have a horrible sense of humor, as you probably know. And uh, like I was there one day running the network and the person who was being interviewed didn't show up. And I said, go hire that person because they were psychic. They knew you weren't going to hire them. <laughs> and the, I'm amazed the guy kept me around. I was worried. That's funny. He took me, he met these people that ran those, like what were they, yeah. 900 numbers? But that's like yeah, psychic yeah. reading. Yeah, like, yeah. Yeah. And he took me to this office to meet these people that he was thinking about hiring. And uh, they had a book. And it was like a three ring binder that was like, Mm -hmm. three inches thick, four inches thick. Right. And literally they would open it up and the first page would be the, the greeting. (laughs) And then there were options like four or five options. Yeah. Yeah. And they would flip to that page. Like it was like choose your Mm -hmm. own adventure. Yeah. Yeah. Giant flow chart. And that's all it was. And it was just this, okay, flip to page 10, read this. Okay. Which one did they say? Go to page 20. Right. And it was fascinating to me how (laughs) of, Active. And it's the same type of thing, right? It's a scam. It yeah. like, I do yeah. not believe that no matter what you think about psychic readings, I don't believe the people that charge by the minute on a phone call are real. <laughs> um, I, so, I, but it's the same type of scam, right? They have the answers, they have the script, they have the thing. It's just mind boggling. Yep. Yeah. So, so there's the message for all of you that are looking for love. Don't be looking for love in the wrong places. There's our advice. I knew that was coming. I knew that yeah. was coming. <laughs> I, I, I had to say that. Yes. We should have the Eddie Murphy thing from Saturday Night Live. What can pen of? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh. Uh, I'll look it up later. <laughs> so uh, to end the, the show this week, we'll talk about something alarming, but also funny at the same time. <laughs> um, this new form of ransomware that wants you to <laughs> like and subscribe. <laughs> Like, like, and subscribe to us on YouTube. This is a so revolution you in ransomware back. methodology. Yeah, revolution. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I mean, so, miles. Yes, yes. So it's been reported that there is a new form of ransomware that's out there. That it doesn't look like this is widespread. Just to you know, I don't think it ever that, will be, <laughs> um, or ever will be. Yeah. But um, yeah, um, someone has figured out to apparently. Coming out of Indonesia, apparently, um, this ransomware will encrypt your system and pop up a message that you have to like and subscribe to a certain YouTube channel um, to get your data back. Um, so, and apparently, the in the article they talk about how the YouTube channel only has like sixty four subscribers, um, and it may be just some kid because he's posting videos of him in school or something yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I just that's kind of fun. 
It is. I don't know. Yeah. You know, or I find it funny because I watch a lot of YouTube. Okay, like yeah. I, I've been doing the woodworking stuff, and and I'm mm -hmm. watching these these people that will show you different tips and tricks, and without fail, you have the the little clips that like, subscribe, click the bell, yep. whatever. Right? Like there's this like script yeah. for it. Yep. And and. I just and there's also the other side of it where they're like our sponsor today is and they talk about their sponsor. I mean, we just did that, and um, <laughs> we have but, a YouTube channel by the way. <laughs> and we have a YouTube channel, and like, like, I just have this image of the next YouTube video I'm watching. Like, and we'd like to thank our our uh, sponsors, the Revel team or the R Evil team, or right? like. <laughs> The Russian hacker ransomware gang is our sponsor today. And, you know, if you're browsing the dark net, you can, I, like, this is, <laughs> it just doesn't, I don't know. Yeah. I just, yeah. I really feel like this is, I, <laughs> as awful as this may sound, there is a show on Netflix called Vincenzo. And it's a Korean drama. And my wife and I watch a lot of Korean dramas and stuff like that. And this one I find hilarious because if you watch a lot of Korean dramas, yeah. there's, the comedy ones have a certain flow. There's certain things mm -hmm. that happen in a comedy. Okay. So, um, and this is just not Korean, but in this case, Korean. Um, there's also the idea of a mafia show, right? And, yeah. and the thing I love about Vincenzo is that it's a mafia show that really, as you watch it, turns out to be a Korean drama comedy. Okay. So it's funny and also, which is kind of interesting. And that's what I feel that this story is, right? Like it's, a, yeah. you started it as a serious security problem, ransomware, blah, blah, blah. But if you like and subscribe over, it's just ass. Yeah. I'm sorry. I just yeah. I can't. Yeah. <laughs> So, so with that, I do want to state that um, this show is not sponsored by any ransomware gang. Nobody, but no ransomware gang. Please like and subscribe to us <laughs> on YouTube um, if you're watching well, we this on our YouTube. Encrypt channel. your files. We will not encrypt your files, um, but we appreciate the likes and the subscribes. So, oh, man. <laughs> I had to state that now. Yeah, I, yeah. I just. <laughs> you know, the best part is, if you were the ransomware author. Mm -hmm. My bet is the ransomware author is not the kid who runs the YouTube. Oh, yeah. It's, I can almost guarantee repackage. Yeah. Yeah. If, yeah. if I was going to build a ransomware package to try out this like and subscribe thing, I would totally find a off the wall, four <laughs> people watch this channel, <laughs> yeah. right? like whatever. Yeah. And that would be the channel. Okay. If you like That's and right. subscribe to that one over there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, I mean, it's also if you're liking and subscribing a YouTube channel or Facebook page or something like that, it's not going to be long before you're caught, right? <laughs> for oh, for okay, but, yeah. like my question is, okay, so I like and subscribe to it, and then I unlike and unsubscribe. Yeah, yeah, to it. yeah. Like, like right. there's no long term benefit to this, right? Yeah. Like, yeah, take the back I... Very stupid. Oh yeah. man, but also uh, people should come to our Reddit site. It's it's pretty cool. I'm I'm liking that, and I love the the post with the guys with the ladder. Said so you can yes. social engineering. <laughs> yeah, you can get in. The video. You can get yeah. in anywhere if you carry in a ladder. You carry a ladder. Yeah. I yeah. still insist that that video is fake. Oh, I, let me be very clear. <clears throat> I totally believe you can get in anywhere with a ladder because I have. But <laughs> <laughs> I have to say, I've done it with flowers and a big right. box. But I think I, the, I, the, the, the I woman in the background, the, I, the I, woman that was fil filming it was in on it, but she was laughing her head off. So I think it was real. Like, I mean, yeah. In that case, yeah, yeah. I don't know. I, I'd like <laughs> to believe it's real. I know it happened. Don't get me wrong. Oh, I've yeah. Done it. Definitely. Like I said, Tom's done right. it, right? Red team engagements. Yeah, sure. That one just doesn't mm -hmm. feel real to me. Right. right, like that's that's all. That's, I just, anyway, yeah. but I'm I'm really enjoying. I've never really used Reddit very much. It's pretty addictive guess, when you get on it. But yeah, let me be very clear. One of my favorite Reddits, subreddits, is that what they call it? Subreddit. Yeah. I feel like the old lady who's like, I don't know how to share things <laughs> on my Facebook wall. And, uh, <laughs> that commercial, right? Um, but my favorite subreddit is, "Am I the asshole?" I am. In, I don't know why. It's <laughs> awful. But I'm I'm enjoying it. I yeah. <laughs> so yeah. All right. Well, with that, um, like and subscribe. Check us out on Reddit, <laughs> and uh, we will talk to everyone next week. That's all for this week's show. Visit our website sharedsecurity.net for all previous episodes and to sign up for our email newsletter. 
Looking for shared security merch? Be sure to check out our online store at store.sharedsecurity.net. Don't forget, you can always find us on Twitter at SharedSec, and please hit that like and subscribe button below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next week for another episode of the Shared Security Show. Thank <laughs> you.